Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with another hobby tutorial. This time it's an Age of Sigmar tutorial. I did focus primarily on 40k for 2022 and I did promise everybody that in 2023 I would be branching out and doing more of the Age of Sigmar and Lord of the Rings stuff. So to that end, I'm going to be working through the Slaves to Darkness range, the new range that Games Workshop just dropped um, in an entire playlist so you guys can see those models in action. So I'm going to be starting off with the new Exalted Champion, absolutely stunning model. And um, Games Workshop very kindly provided this model to me um, for video review today. So very big thank you to them. Um, and I'm going to be painting it up in its alternative build. So it's got dual axes. And I'm going to keep the armored head because it's really cool. And I'm going to be painting it up in the Nurgle scheme. So it should be a lot of fun. Before we get to the video, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of my patrons. You guys are awesome. Without you, I could not keep the lights on and the cameras rolling. For any out there interested in joining my Patreon, just know that as of 2023, there is a bunch of new perks for joining the community, including an extra video every single week that's just for Patreons. So that means a 52 extra videos in the year for you guys. So if you want to know all about that, click on the links below. Without further ado, guys, let's get into the video. Okay, so this is the beautiful new Exalted Hero of Chaos. When I actually opened the box, I didn't realize it came with the option for the dual axes, which reminds me of a kind of an older Chaos Warrior champion that I used to have in metal. So nostalgia grabbed me and I had to build them that way. I gave him my normal Gracier spray. And then after that, we moved straight on to contrast. So I used Plague Bear Flesh as the first color for all the plate armor on this model. I'm basing my... Um, Slaves to Darkness army around the Nurgle uh, Chaos God. Nurgle is by far my favorite Chaos God, so I intend to do quite a large Nurgle Demon army, along with a Slaves to Darkness, a Beastman, and basically everything is going to be themed around Nurgle, so they're all going to have matching bases, meaning I can play quite large games if I choose to, or pick and choose different units from different armies and build kind of a crazy army. It's a bunch of different ways of doing it. So after the Plague Bear Flesh applies all the armor panels, it's time to move over to uh, Contrast Black Templar. And this is for all the parts that are in between the panels. Plus I use it for the wraps on his, or the halves of his axe. And there's a couple of other little details around the model. Nothing crazy. Ribbons that hold on his uh, necklace and stuff like that. This is a fairly quick step just to get a few of the, I call them gubbins, just the extra bits of the model that you're not really sure what color they're supposed to be. You can always just black those in. Um, and as long as they're not a focal part of the miniature, nobody knows about them, nobody cares about them, no one will be looking at them, so it's fine. After that, we're going over to Gore Grunt of Fur. I swear under that filthy pot, it says Gore Grunt of Fur. And this is for any of the leather strappy bits. So he's got one big belt around his waist. I'm also going to use this to base coat the uh, big patch of fur going up over his right shoulder onto his cloak. We're going to get that done with the Gorgrunt of fur as well. It's going to be a perfect base coat for some, some nice furs. So uh, normally it would be um, like that, that Nurgle would be kind of a darker, grungier scheme. I quite like them to be a little bit cleaner looking. That's just me. Skeleton Horde was used as the base coat contrast for all of the bone work. So he's got a protruding horn out of his shoulder pad. He's obviously got two big massive horns coming out of his head, which is actually holding a skull. So that all needs to get done with a coat of Skeleton Horde. This is another one of those super quick steps. But if you're going to be doing a uh, Chaos Army of any um, flavor, they are going to have bone on them. So learn how to get a quick and effective coat of bone on a model is uh, super helpful. After that, we're going to move over to Volopus Pink and we're going to use this for his cloak. I always enjoyed that contrast and color of the bright pink uh, color uh, against the kind of dark, horrible green. Yeah, and it works a treat with this model uh, as well. I mean, most Chaos Warrior models have big, beautiful cloaks. So having a really nice, interesting, eye-catching color for their cloaks really will make the difference between an army that's just kind of filthy and boring looking. And um, a big secondary color is really cool. It's something that excites me to see uh, on a much larger scale across a bigger army. I also did his plume there with the Volopus Pink. He's got a big headdress plume. I decided to use matching colors. 
Balthazar gold was used to base coat in all of the metallic trim parts on the armor. So all of the protruding kind of eight pointed stars uh, across the armor were done. His belt buckle was done, the symbol on his uh, shoulder guard. And if you pay attention to the horns coming out of his helmet, there's basically uh, metallic parts on the top and the bottom of the horn. So we're gonna get those all done with the, the Balthazar gold as well, as well as some details on his right hand ax. This is another thing that works really well, that kind of brassy tone with the Nurgle. It just, it's just it's such a nice scheme. It's actually quite an enjoyable scheme to paint as well. Some schemes look fantastic, but they're actually quite tedious and annoying to do. I didn't find that at all with uh, painting this guy. Like if you told me I'd turn around now and handed me a squad of 10 KS warriors and said paint them up to match this scheme, I'd be more than happy to go away and do it. Lead belt was used for all the other metallic parts of the miniature. So that of course means the blades of his ax and all the chain mail and stuff hanging down from the model and any other details that you like. Obviously some of the trim, you just don't have to paint in Balzar Gold. If you want it to be silver, you can do that too. If you want his belt buckle to be silver, if you want, you can do a different model to model. That's just a personal choice. Uh, with the silver applied, that will bring all the base coats to this miniature to a close. So it's now time to wash it. So for that, we're gonna move over and Agrax Earthshade the model just to kind of darken it all down. While the Agrax Earthshade is uh, drying, I'm going to base the miniature. I'm going with my standard grey basing scheme, which I'm doing for basically every Chaos model that I own. So I can do that thing I said at the start where I can mix the armies together. They'll all be on the same basing scheme, they'll all match in, and it'll work a treat. I actually do all my 40k Chaos the same because obviously demons can go between 40k and fantasy. So in order to keep it simple and uh, the whole way through, uh, I stick with the same scheme. It's a very simple scheme. And after the wash, the model really does look fantastic. It looks very nurgly. Um, and if you really need to paint an army fast for, say, a tournament, you could leave it at this stage. Get the whole army up to that stage, and I think they look fantastic. We're going to take it a few steps further here on this video, though. So we're going to start with the Death Guard green, and we're going to be layering up all of the plate armor. We do want to leave that grungy green color in all the recesses and all the shadows. It's just the kind of raised plate armor parts of the model that we want to give a quick highlight to with the Death Guard green. This will pull the model back towards that kind of neat look, which I actually like for Death Guard. I keep saying Death Guard, I do apologize for the Nurgle Chaos Warriors. This is actually a really enjoyable stage as well. I do quite enjoy the, the neat layering, trying to get in and seeing the, the kind of armor panels pop again. Just take your time, get on all the plate all the little rivets on this model made uh, smooth brush strokes a little annoying uh, I like to follow brush stroke through from kind of start to finish but I kept having to paint around those little rivets okay once the Death Guard green is done we're gonna go to Mornfang Brown and we're going to layer up the uh, belt and fur so any of those bits we did the Gorgon to fur at the start we're gonna layer up with a bit of Mornfang Brown Another super quick, super easy step. Model's really starting to come together now. I can see the finish line. It's just a few little highlights away. Okay, from here, we are gonna jump over to uh, Screamer Pink and we're gonna layer up that be big, beautiful cloak. So following uh, the raised parts of the cloak, we're gonna paint up the, the higher portions of it. And we're gonna leave where all those folds go into shadow, we're gonna leave those nice and dark. That's basically how highlighting works. You add bright paint to the bits that the light is going to hit to simulate that it's been hit by the light and is brighter. And any bits where there's nooks and crannies or folds or recesses or under armpits or behind shields are darker so therefore they're not going to get light therefore they're not going to be highlighted not going to be brighter some people i think can over complicate that in videos talking about secondary light sources and all sorts confusing the situation After that, we're going to go to Lead Belcher and we're going to highlight all the metallic, that's the gold and the silver parts with this. 
when it comes to touching up the Balzar gold bits, it's just gonna be a few touch highlights. So as you can see here, I'm just basically hitting the sharp points and corners. I'm not trying to get like a silver coat across the entire piece. That really does make all of those gold uh, parts pop though. Looks really nice. And then of course we're gonna properly layer up the chainmail and the blades on his axes. Looking slick. From there, it's time to layer up all of the bone parts. So for this, we're gonna go up to a screaming, are you shafty bone, sorry. And we're gonna add a quick layer to all of the bone parts of the miniature. I take my time uh, with the skulls, you know, doing proper highlighting, getting the the bridge of the non-existent nose and the cheeks and the forehead and stuff like that. Uh, with the horns, there's not a lot of detail, uh, like etch detail into the horns. So they ended up basically just being almost a solid coat of Yushapti bone on them. Some people will do that fade from brown at the bottom into bone at the tips. I mean, that's up to you if you want to put in that extra effort. It's every model in the range has a horn helmet, so it's going to slow down the progress of getting an army painted quite a lot, but that's okay. Each to their own. And with that, we have a completed Exalted Hero of Chaos painted up in my Nurgle scheme. I really enjoy it, and I cannot wait to bring the rest of the playlist and the rest of the series of the new Slaves of Darkness to you guys in the very near future. Okay, guys, and there we have it. We have one Exalted Hero painted up uh, in the Nurgle scheme. Um, if some of you keen-eyed people notice, I don't know if anybody did, this is exactly actually the exact same color scheme that I did for my Death Guard video. So once again, I just want to show you guys that you don't need to be so strict when you watch a painting video online that those colors have to go with that model. Think about it more as that's a really nice way of printing green Nurgle armor that's on that video. I can apply that to all these other Nurgle things that are in my collection that I like and to the whole bunch of other examples of that. Thank you guys for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you drop us a like. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, it would mean the world to me. It took two seconds out of your day and hit that subscribe button. And like I said at the start of the video, if you're interested in supporting me even further, there's links to things like my Patreon below, which like I said, gets you access for an extra video. And there's also a private Discord server where you can talk to me about your hobby and join a very cool, growing community. Thank you guys for sticking around to the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one.